What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Matthew Maley for MatthewMaley.com. Well, I am back with another poker recap video. But before we get into that, I uh, wanted to address a couple things been going on with the website. Um, <clears throat> as a lot of you guys know, I'm pretty small time. Uh, it's really the best way to put it when it comes to my videos. Most of my videos have under 100 views or at most 150 to 200 views. Um, and I'm cool with that, honestly. I, I mean, of course, I'd like to have a bigger following, but, you know, I, I'd, I would also rather have people interested in what they're checking out rather than it just being spammed out there. But one of my videos, every so often I get a video that, for whatever reason, takes fire a little bit or catches fire and starts getting a ton more views than usual. I had one last uh on New Year's with the shoe review I did, the next thing I know it was in the hundreds and I believe it's in up to almost 1500 now. I have no idea why, no clue. But I had another one that this same thing kind of happened um, with one of my very first World Series of Poker recap videos, um, which was May 29th is when I uploaded it and it is already over 1300 views. So that's about as viral as anything on my website will ever go but with the viral aspect even though I know it's not even close to be considered really viral you're gonna run into issues and I've run into some negative perspectives negative comments um, and just, just some rude perspectives from people um, which I understand is going to happen, to be quite honest. You know, when I first started this website, it was as a as a tool to help better my poker skill and focus my energies for the future, as well as getting to know some people, getting some poker information out there, and trying to help other people. So, I just want to, you know, I'm sure people have seen the video and have seen the negative comments. I'm not going to delete them or anything like that. And at the end of the day, honestly, I really don't care about the negative comments. Um, they kind of just are what they are. You know, I, I feel that, you know, I'm comfortable enough with myself that I can take some criticism. I never once have said that I was, you know, the best poker player ever or I do the best videos ever or anything like that. I mean... I, I know I, I, I know that I need work in a lot of ways. So my only request is anybody who wants to talk shit, go ahead, talk shit. I don't care. But if you're going to, at least give a reasoning behind it. Don't just say, hey, man, you're a fish. Say you're a fish because you missed a bet on third, or I mean on 4th Street that would have ended up putting more money in your pocket. Give me reasons. That's the type of stuff that I like to hear personally. So, I mean, all I can do is ask at the end of the day if you guys, you know, want to keep talking shit, you can keep talking shit. It's all good. But now that that's out of the way, um, we'll get to the, to the review. I mean, to the recap. And honestly, the part of the reason why I do this is because I have gotten so much positive response. More, way more so than the negative response. Even with this new influx of negative responses, I've still gotten so much more positive, you know, in the long run that it, it still is worth it to me. And I feel there's, you know, potential advantages that can come out of this, both personally and for my viewers. So, sorry, had to get that out there. Um, and again, thank everybody. I'm thanking everybody for all the positive comments. And, um, uh, you know, all the new followers, everything, I, I really appreciate it. It's been a great summer from that aspect. So, first time that I've actually gotten to play since the series. Um, I had to go back to Arizona for a few days, um, some family stuff. Then add to that, my bankroll's been incredibly tight. Um, just been a little difficult. So, I have not been able to play since the series, but for the first time was able to scrounge a couple pennies together and um, decided I was going to go hit up the 1-2 game over at the Planet Hollywood. Now, one thing that I've mentioned before, I personally really only like to buy into a game when I can max buy. Um, I've always been that way. I really don't like getting to a game, you know, with a min buy 
or even just less than what the max is, just because it puts you in a chip disadvantage against people who have been grinding at the game for 14, 18, 22 hours, whatever, and are sitting there with five times the buy-in. It just puts you in a negative perspective. So, plus, I've never really liked buying in min, especially in a no-limit game. You know, I don't like buying in to a 1-3 game with 100 bucks or a 1-2 game with 100 bucks because really you're only playing for one, one big hand. You know, and you're either gonna double up or you're rebuying. But since I only brought two hundred dollars to play, I figured, you know what? Rather than just buying for two, it's just buying one bullet. And um, I did. I ended up just buying in for one hundred. So I kind of decided I was gonna play a little bit small ball, rather conservative in the beginning. Um, try to build up the money a little bit, and then once I, you know, gotten up, I would be a little more tricky, if you will. So very first hand I played, um, I had to wait, I think, a hand, and then I got in. And uh, I was probably two or three hands in. I picked up pocket nines, and um, it was called by two or three people before it got to me. I was one off of the button. Um, so I raised at that point, um, got a caller from the big blind, and a caller from the initial rate, or the initial caller as well. Um, the flop came up, it was actually, I felt like it was a decently safe flop. The flop came up 9-7-4, rainbow. I'm sorry, it's a jack 7-4, not 9-7-4. Wish it would have been 9-7-4. It's a little late, I do apologize. It's almost 4. Um, but I ended up feeling pretty solid. Then was somebody had ace jack, I was probably in the lead. Um, so it was small blind check, first go called, checked, came to me, I fired at it. Um, got a call from the big blind and a muck from the whoever you know the, the next. I think it was I think it was an initial caller. It was under the gun. Um, turn card comes a four. I end up um, he checks again to me. I fire another bet and he lets it go. So first hand out that I actually played, I, I made a decent amount of money on. Um, I believe I made about forty dollars on that pot. So it was pretty solid. Um, I, I was happy about it, obviously. Um, I ended up, again, playing rather small. About a round and a half, two rounds later. Um, so I'm still at about 100, 140, 130-ish or so. I pick up ace-queen offsuit. That was an interesting position because it had been raised, the, the pot had been raised under the gun by a lady that, um, from what I'd seen of her playing, was decently aggressive, but from what I'd seen, had some pretty solid hands. She was aggressive, but her hand range of what she'd shown was was pretty tight. So, person next to her folds, and then it goes to, I'm sorry, she was actually under the gun plus one, because under the gun called. She then raises. It then goes fold, fold, then the guy right before me calls. So it was a really weird spot for Ace Queen because really, I mean, an Ace King potential of one of those three other people is very possible. Who knows what's happening behind me as well? So I didn't want to get in too deep on this and then, you know, overplay my hand, which <clears throat> we all know I do. So I ended up just calling, um, which I felt, you know, gave me some potential to get away from the hand because I'm not too much I don't have too much invested um, it then after me went back to the original um, caller and he also called so the flop came up <laughs> it was beautiful ace queen five so I flopped top two pair beautiful 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 no flush draw no straight draw um, well I mean a little bit but only if you have king gen or king jack so I feel pretty solid about it, obviously. Um, I check. It ends up, I'm sorry, no, it, it actually goes to the lady um, who made the raise. First person checked. She ends up putting in a bet of about 25, I believe. It's folded. Um, the guy right before me folds, and then it comes to me. I end up deciding that, you know what, I'm, I'm oh, I'm sorry, there actually was a flush drop. There, was, there were two hearts on board. And I felt that, obviously, you know, there is that potential, but I, I felt, I didn't feel that she was on something like that. I put her on, you know, a decent ace, you know, not as, obviously not a two-pair ace, but I thought maybe like an ace-ten type of hand, you know, and an ace-jack type of hand maybe. 
Um, or maybe even a pocket pair, a pocket pair like Jacks or Tens, something like that. So it ends up, um, I called, like I said, and then the person who initially made the call folded. So now it's just heads up. And heads up, she ends up um, on the turn. It's a, it's a blank, not a heart. She ends up betting again. Um, but it was weird. It was a weird bet because she bet 25 on the flop, and this time she only bet 25 again. So it really was a weird bet just based on the size of the pot, and she seemed like a pretty solid player, so that kind of confused me. So I ended up, now this is where I, I really do feel that I should have bumped it just to see where we were at, um, just because even if she, if she was on the flush draw, why let her see a free card? But I don't know, I, just, I had this feeling that she wasn't on the flush draw. So my feeling told me just to call, which I did, um, as opposed to raising. So I really feel that if I would have thrown in a raise there to 55, 60-ish, I really think that she might have you know, called that, and I, I feel like I might have missed a bet. So river card comes out, hearts don't connect, and no straight or anything comes up off of it. I mean, it was a, the most innocuous card. I, I believe it was like a deuce of clubs or something, or tray of clubs. So it, uh, she ends up checking to me. So definitely was, was kind of weird that she had taken, you know, the lead, pre-flop, flop, and turn. But now she's checking to me. So I, you know, really felt that she was probably just giving up on the hand. I ended up betting 65. Now, I probably could have gone a little bit more just because you figure there was, you know, uh, 140 in the pot, I think. Um, so it, was, it wasn't quite um, a half pot but it was it was I would say it was probably about a third of a pot I felt pretty solid about about my hand so in my mind I was value betting um, <laughs> you know top two pairs still pretty decent it is only two pair but still pretty decent so she thought about it for a while and um, ended up making the call actually she didn't show what she had um, once I showed my ace queen but that was a really nice pot for me um, that one took me down I mean took me up to probably about like 240 or so, um, 230, 240 at least. So yeah, it had to have even been more than that. It was probably like 260, 270. So I ended up, um, I had a couple pots that I chased a little bit. I probably shouldn't have. Um, one where I flopped a double belly buster straight and neither end got there. Um, had another one where I flopped a middle pair with um, a gut shot and then that turned into a open-ended straight on the turn, and then neither one got there. So that was a, I ended up calling a bet on the river with that, with, with middle pair. I probably shouldn't have, I know that, but it ended up, I don't know, I, I, I guess it was a little bit of a hero call, I admit that. It was a little bit of a hero call, and sadly, I wasn't a hero. So that, uh, that hand hurt me a little bit and brought me back down, but, uh, one really big hand was I picked up pocket aces, and um, I picked up pocket aces on the button, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and a guy, probably like under the gun plus two, um, made it, I want to say 12, no, it couldn't, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but take that back. It couldn't have been under the gun plus two because a few people had called initially, a few people had called. Um, and, yeah, because then I'm in, I'm in plus 40. Okay, yeah, there we go. Sorry, I had to replay that one in my head. Um, I don't know why. It's funny, you think a hand like aces, I would know, remember exactly what it was. But, um, a couple of people had called before him. He actually raised it to 13, I believe. I ended up, um, raising it right after that. It went fold, fold to me. I re-raised and raised him to, I want to say 42 total, maybe it was 47 total. Um, I just, I had this feeling with how he made the raise that he had a good hand. I didn't think he had kings. I thought he had, you know, queen, jacks, maybe ace, king, but I felt that it was enough that he was going to call me. Um, even though I, it was a pretty solid raise for a 1-2 game, but I just, I had this feeling that I was, I was going to get a, a call. He then um, repops me to, I want to say he shoved. Yeah, he did. He shoved, actually. Um, 
Yeah, he shoved in, then I called. That's what it was. He shoved in, I called. I'm sorry, I don't know why. I'm tired, apparently. I didn't get enough sleep. Um, usually I can remember these hands, boom, boom, boom. But I ended up, uh, you know, obviously calling, rolled over my aces, and he rolled over kings. So really, no matter how I played it, all the money was going to get in there anyway. So, I mean, I could have raised, I could have, you know, anything. It would have gotten in there. I mean, no matter how I played it. But... At the end of the day, I ended up, they held up, aces held. It was a definite cold deck situation for him. Sucks when you get in the cold deck, but hey, I was on the right end of it. So um, that actually took me up to almost 350. And I'd actually been getting a little bit, a little tired. Um, Saturday night kind of felt like, um, you know, hanging out in the, with Nino a little bit, partying a little bit. So honestly, I kind of was, was ready to pack up. I mean, I had three, and there's a funny thing, I had 347, um, I'm sorry, 346 in chips, so I needed four chips away from having a full, you know, 350, and therefore three blacks, two greens, that's what I was hoping to have, well, <laughs> of course, and the funny thing, I only had three dollars in my wallet, because I was going to pull the money out, you know, and just get it there. But I only had $3 in my wallet, so I needed one more dollar. So I pick up A7 on the button. I'm sorry, one off the button. And uh, I end up putting in a raise. Really, I just want to take down the blinds and annies, and I'm going to cash out. Um, I just wanted to get the 350 <laughs> as corny as that is. But we always do weird things like that. Like, we get so fixated on one number or one specific thing that we're going to do. Sometimes it, it over... It, it overlays what we should do, you know? Who cares about a couple extra dollars at that point? You know, if mentally I was in a spot where I needed, where I felt like I should leave, I should have just left. So, you pick up A7 of diamonds. Um, one off the button. Make a raise to 11, if I'm not mistaken. Folds around, big blind. Big blind calls. So, really, I, I just wanted to take it down there, whatever, it didn't happen. So, flop comes up. Queen, Jack, Seven. Queen and Jack are of diamonds. All right, you know, we're beautiful. Four to, the, for the, four to the nut flush, bottom pair. You know, if another seven ball comes out, that's probably gonna be pretty solid. Who's texting me at four o'clock in the morning? Let's see. Oh, got a lot of Facebook. Um, but I honestly, uh, I, I felt pretty solid about it, and I really felt like I was finally getting to hit a flush on here. So I end up, um, he checks to me, and I end up betting 20 into it. So as soon as I bet it, he, uh, he ends up, ra uh, no, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He took the lead. He took the lead on me and bet 25 into the pot. So I, I, I felt that he was probably trying to get me off of a flush draw. So I ended up calling, just because in the implied odds aspect, I mean, technically, you know, there was, I was only getting about two to one on my money, but I really felt that I had implied odds. I felt that if I can pick this, you know, if I can pick up a diamond, I'm taking down this pot, and it's going to be a good pot. I'm going to take most of the stack, and he, he had just bought in for the full three, so I'm thinking this is perfect. Turn card hits a blank, nine ball, peels off. Um... Sadly, not a diamond. So he now bets 55, and I should have gotten away from it. I should not have called that, but again, I am feeling implied odds. Definitely my regular pot odds weren't there, but implied odds, I was feeling it. So I called again. River uh, ends up doubling up with the queen, puts another queen ball up there. So that really, obviously, was about as bad of a card as I could have, you know, had hit. Um, so that pretty much killed all my hopes and dreams. I wasn't going to call with just a seven, um, with essentially bottom pair into that. I just wasn't going to, especially when he bet 150 on the river. So I let it go and it sucked, but I went from only needing $4 to, to be at 350 to thanks to that pot going down to 250. So that kind of sucked. Um, so I ended up a few hands later, um, I actually had a, a hand where I came up a little bit and then gave it back um, where I had a pocket pair, I pocket deuces, and it, on the river I got counterfeited. The flop came up 7-7 seven, seven jack, um, 
blank on the turn, another jack on the river. So I played the board, and that one kind of sucked because I actually braced pre-flop and bet on the flop, um, but didn't bet any other streets other than that. So it wasn't too bad. And uh, ended up getting up, up 150. So I uh, am definitely happy about it considering the fact that I haven't had any good series. I haven't had any good runs since I've been here. That is my first winning session since I have been in Las Vegas, other than my $18 session for my second day. This was truly my first winning session at all, and I'm praying it's the first of many. <laughs> that is what I'm hoping for. So it wasn't a big win, but anytime you can double your money, you got to be happy. So I was happy. Um, I would have loved to have gotten it to four or five, you know, and walk with a purple, but I got to walk with with, uh, with two blacks and two greens. So that was cool. Um, one problem, though, is on my way back through the casino, heading over to the heart bar, I got a feeling and put 50 of it on black, which has been the bane, to quote some Batman, of my existence for the past, really my entire gambling life. Um, I've made more money than I can think, and than I can count doing dumb shit like that at the roulette table just walking up and putting a couple hundred bucks down on black but I've lost more money than I can count doing the same thing and I've been doing really well I hadn't done any of that dumb shit but maybe one or two times in the past couple years and for whatever reason just had this feeling it was also I walked up and saw a table um, that had just had one of my favorite numbers hit plus somebody had bet was betting black really strong so I always bet black. I never, ever, 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 ever bet red. Um, so I put the 50 down on that. And of course, it was pretty much the entire way in and then bounced into red 12, which is funny because red 12 is one of my favorite numbers. 12 and 20 are my two favorite numbers. Red 12 is one of the only numbers I will bet that's a red number. So it bounced out and instead of $150 profit, it was a $100 profit, which is just stupid. It is absolutely moronic for me to do that. The fact that my bankroll is already so small, the fact that I've had so many issues building and having anything run well out here, the fact that I just blew 50 bucks for just stupidity's sake is horrible. I mean, if it would have been movies or partying or something else, even a pair of shoes, even a really nice dinner, at least that would have been better in my mind than just throwing 50 bucks away. And part of the reason that I did it is because I just had lost that big pot that I was thinking, okay, if I pick this up, now instead of it being 150, that means I won 200, which is a little bit better. And that means I get to have another black chip. <laughs> but I am pissed off on myself because I shouldn't have done it. I know better than that. I know how serious and strong I have to be from a bankroll standpoint, and I cannot do dumb shit like that at all. So, you live and you learn. I am in Vegas. It is the city of stupidity, not just sin of stupidity. So, I got to live my stupid moment for the weekend, as far as I'm concerned. So there you go, that is my recap video for uh, my first 1-2 session I played since the series. Um, let me know what you guys think. Um, do you think I missed a bet in that one specific hand? Do you think that I could have played my A7 a little better, other than not being in the hand in the first place? Let me know. I, I really, I, I know I said I got some horrible comments, but I also got some really good ones. Um, I got a few comments about an exact breakdown of, you know, this bet was too little because of this. You should have bet this on this. That's what I like. That really makes me think. And I love thinking about poker. That's one of my favorite things to think about. So anytime that, that a thought, you know, provoking argument can be brought up, makes me happy. So if you guys are out there, leave me comments. I like those type of comments. So thank you guys for checking out my videos. As always, um, like I said, we've been getting a ton of video, a ton of new viewers here on MatthewMillie.com. So a big welcome to all my new viewers, all my new followers on Twitter and all that. Much appreciated. And uh, stay tuned. 
So as always, you can check out the rest of my videos on MatthewManley.com. Check out the 2012 video blog tab. It has all my current stuff. Also, the previous video blog tab is getting put together. Uh, I had to restart it from scratch. So I don't have anything up there yet, but I will soon. Also, check me out on YouTube. Search for Matthew Manley Poker. Got everything listed up there from uh, really my entire video catalog, almost 300 videos that you can like, you can comment on them, and you can subscribe to the channel. Also, as always, you can check me out on Facebook. I've got all these videos posted directly on Facebook. Um, so check me out, search for Matthew Maley Poker, and uh, you can leave me a comment there if you'd like, or send me a message directly. You can also hit me up on Twitter. I am at Matthew Maley. So follow me and drop me a line. It's always nice to hear from my new fans and new followers. So until the next video, I am officially signing off. Hope everybody has a great weekend. Peace out, y'all.